I call him Titan. Titan. Uh, that's my boy. Ty Verde, Tyron Verde. Uh, really good guy. Cool dude. Tyron. Tyron Verde or Verde? I don't know. I think it's pronounced like, it's like a free, Frida, Freda. I ask him and then I, he says it to me and then I somehow forget the next week, so I don't know. I can get a full name. Titan Orisius Refert Verde. I just call him Ty, but everyone calls him Verde, so I mean, I think that's easiest for everybody, so I'll, I'll stay with that. Hi, my name is Tyden Rysias Leffert Vrede. I'm a middle linebacker. I'm from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and I play at UND. Here we go! It all started with playing flag football for a couple months. A friend of mine got me into the sport. Um, at that time, there was a rule that under, I think under 16, you weren't allowed to play tackle yet. So I started playing flag football because he played flag football. And when I started, it wasn't really that popular. I think most of the people, when I talked to them about American football, thought it was rugby because the shape of the ball is kind of similar. I think around 18, I always wanted to go to States, whether it was for soccer or at that time I was playing football. I did play in a Team World game, so we played with uh, guys from all over different countries against Team USA, and that's how I kind of knew that I could play at an American level. And that's when I was sure that I really wanted to come here and play football. So I started playing junior college football at West Hills uh, College in California. I played there for a year and then transferred to Garden City Community College in Kansas. Played there for a semester and tried to get uh, recruited. Well, Coach Schmidt recruited him and we began the process. Dylan Bacher was a linebacker who had played well for us. He had a uh, relationship with Tyron, and you know that's how the process started. It. Dylan Bacher that also played here from Amsterdam, a good friend of mine, he got me in contact with Coach Schmidt, and um, he talked a lot about how this place was really good for football and education, and that's kind of how we got in contact. On his visit, you could see that this is something that really meant a lot to him to play Division I football, and that he found a good fit in the University of North Dakota. Where he came from, He's kind of been in programs where everyone's trying to get out and do their own thing and he said uh, when he came here he kind of felt family. Coach Schmidt tells a story when he transferred here he was I was in tears when he went and pulled up the Grand Forks just because it might have been because it was really cold out that day or because he was just really that that happy to be here and, and, and for that opportunity. The experience here of playing is amazing. Uh, this is what I always wanted to do. I believe I could play Division One football and now I'm doing that in this great environment, a great stadium, great team as it always are happy when they see me and see each other and just a really good uh, family feeling in this team. Ty, is, he's definitely like the everyday Joe, kind of like he goes to work silently. Um, he's always positive attitude, always wants to get better, um, helps others out. He's a very vocal leader. He leads by example, but very vocal, I'd say. And off the field, he's a really fun guy to hang around with. He is, he's funny, but serious at the same time. So I really, I really look up to him about that. He's, he's an older guy, so you know, he's been through a lot. To see him really just become comfortable with our system and with how things are here, you know, it's, it's different. You're in a foreign country, going to college where traditions are different, where football is different, and a number of things are different, but he's really worked hard to adjust to the changes. And then, you know, this whole thing weighing on his mind whether he was going to get that second year of Division I football. And, I'm just really pleased and really happy with the decision because it was the right thing to give a young man that goes about his daily life in the way all NCAA athletes should go about their daily life. It was really great to see he gets that second year of eligibility. Once I heard the news that I got my year back, it was, it was crazy. It was like I couldn't stop crying. It was all the weight that just came off me. I, I called my teammates. and. They all sent me nice messages and it was just amazing, yeah. Ty receiving that extra year was just like, I don't know, it was joy. It's like your mom like saying like, oh, you and your brother go play outside again. Like, I get my buddy back. So it was like, pretty good feeling. Appreciation, it comes for the things that you usually don't really like, like waking up at five o'clock and going to workouts or practicing. It just makes you look at things differently and, and not taking it for granted like you usually would. He's what? We all should want as an NCAA institution in representing our teams on the field, on the court, wherever it is, because he does everything in a first class manner to show thankfulness for what he's earned here and the opportunity that he was given.
I want to be remembered as a guy that's the same man every day that guys can come to and just ask questions and, and never be ashamed of anything. And also, I like to believe that I work hard for what I do and I like to see that in other people too. And so when they look at me or when they think about me, I hope they, they think of a guy that worked hard every day. We like going on the road. You really get to know your team and your teammates and you spend a lot of time together on those road trips. And it's gonna be a real challenge for us, but it's an exciting challenge for our guys. So we're looking forward to it. We feel like it's time for us to do that, to really challenge our football team with a good opponent on the road. All units of the team, we just gotta to work together to get this win, just keep it rolling. It's just another game for us, you know, so we just gotta keep the momentum going. It's gonna be a tough team, tough fight, but I think if we go in there, prepare mentally, physically, we have a shot at winning. Today, Mother Nature has clenched her fist and socked the Northwest right in the face. Snow, sleet, wind, rain, and a feels-like index around 23 degrees Fahrenheit. It was definitely cold. <laughs> Seeing the snow um, covering the red field, it was pretty fun to go out there, actually. Ah! It's going to affect the game, but it affects the game for both teams, so we, we don't use that as an excuse, and, you know, we battle through the conditions. Oh. Yeah. Most physical, most disciplined, most relentless. we got to want this thing more than the other guys. You got that? Yeah. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. For the University of North Dakota, the challenge today is not so much the weather, it's how do you do what you've never done, and that is defeat the Eastern Washington Eagles. 90 seconds to kick off. Let me hear you, mix. We just didn't get off to a good start, didn't execute the plays that were called. Two early turnovers really stick out, and that's what got them started, and then we were playing catch up the rest of the day. They obviously marched a couple times and scored, and just wasn't the start we had hoped for. They wanted to establish a run, and they did that, um, but as far as what they did, I feel like we hurt ourselves more than they did. You gotta get down and get ready to go, guys, all right? We just weren't fitting things up correctly and, and gotten, we were in the wrong gaps and they were running through the, through the right ones, so it just, it's not a, not a great, great recipe for success. Beria going to keep it, finds a wide open hole, touchdown, and it's 27 to 7 Eastern Washington. We wanted to fight, we had to go back out there and compete, uh, go to battle with them, and that's what we did. Ketteringham going downfield, pass intended for Mark, it is caught inside the five! It's a big hit for North Dakota! We always have a chance to get back in the games, and even down three scores, you know, we all knew that we had have the players to get back in it. There weren't a whole lot of major changes, it was just executing better, and we came out, we had a really balanced attack in the third quarter, one of our better quarters. Boltman going to keep it himself. Cuts inside. Touchdown, Brock Boltman. He's a Brock star. It's a one-score game. Hey, we got 13 minutes left. We have all the momentum, all right? We were real gritty in the third quarter. Had two opportunities with the ball to go down and get the game tying score, and just didn't happen. Once again, made some mistakes that uh, don't allow you to come out on top. Give this to Sanders Perrier. He will dance into the end zone. Eastern Washington has held serve at home. They defeat North Dakota today, 35 to 20. We're going to learn from it, and we know we have a very good opponent coming up this week. You know, it's always frustrating to lose, but there's a big opportunity ahead of us at home. So, you know, I think everyone just kind of has a mindset to move forward and just get ready for our next opportunity.